Come in. Come in. Ah, raised you finally. Willie McCoy, it's good to hear your voice. I figured it was a good time for an update on this cyberpunk Baofeng UV5R that I've been working on and posting about. Um, so as you can see, I've got the case started. I'm, I'm really unhappy with how it looks, largely because my 3D printer is currently set up for just printing uh, PETG in like a 0.08 mil nozzle with all the stringing and um, under extrusion. So that's a bit of a bummer. So I did print one that was a bit better than this, and then I gave it a ton of high build primer and sanding and some bog on here to get this a bit smoother, but it looks really rough. So uh, I have a buddy with a better printer who's uh, printing one for me at the moment, kind of as a first step in an iterative enclosure. Here's what we're up to. This is pretty cool. Um, I have uh, the SMA cable. So I've grabbed an SMA right angle cable, which would look really good. Like that. Which looks pretty much identical to the original. Um, I don't have another right angle to come off of the top. But I could put it here. And then it should be a short SMA to SMA here. But I think I'll just print something that looks kind of same or at least a different little square head where the cable will come out from this sma to go into that right angle one and then that'll just loop through to to this which is the same socket that's on the radio itself uh which is a i can never tell if it's rp sma or sma rp or sma normal but um this is the one that the baofeng radio uses so uh, an antenna from a baofeng radio will thread right onto here so i'll fix that onto this little pod and then you'll screw your antennas on and off from here and there'll be a cable connecting the old connector to the new one just like in the in this video game model um this power knob from the baffing radio i'll extend this little shaft um in the new 3d print this will be in the right location so there'll be a, a shaft with kind of an extended base that would go on here and that'll be your main power switch and volume control uh, and then annoyingly I can't really change the location of that without doing a lot more um, work <laughs> so I think the rotary encoder is going to go here and it would just kind of pop through so it'll go in the case obviously there's plenty of room for it um, and then there'll be a knob on that and that's how you'll navigate all the menus. Um, on the back, it is crusty, but that's okay. Um, this is just for fun, and it's kind of meant to be uh, a proof of concept to see how possible it is. But without further ado, let me demonstrate the user interface. So I'll just put it so you can see this rotary encoder in the frame. Um, you have this menu here with a bunch of options, uh, which are pretty cool. Probably the most exciting is you click on UHF channels and you can choose a channel and click it and it will type in the digits to the baffling. Um, so no more either remembering these or using Chirp to program it. Um, you know, Chirp only, or the radio only has 127 memory slots, whereas this has an infinite amount. Um, so you can fit all 80 UHF channels, all 60 VHF channels, and then whatever else you want. So um, that's pretty cool to click the button and get the channel just typed in for you. Um, so there's another version of that for VHF. Obviously, there's the scan function. Scan just presses and holds the scan button for 2.1 seconds, which enables the scan. You can click it again to stop the scan. Um, keypad is a pretty cool app keypad lets you emulate any key on the radio so if you press menu um, you can start navigating through the menus just like on a normal Baofeng radio so if you want to change your squelch you can go in here hit menu down change it and exit and then obviously you have your nine sorry your ten numbers that you can press as well 
So that's the keypad app. I'm calling them apps, but menu option. Then you have the FM radio one. So I'd play around with a few different options here. Um, one was whenever you clicked on FM radio, it would enable the FM radio. But the problem was then disabling it when you left that menu. Um, or sometimes it just randomly jumps into FM mode because something gets shorted out in the back and I wanted to be able to, um, to exit FN mode easily. So I just use a toggle here. So if it's not in FN mode, that button changes it. And if it is in FM mode, it changes it back. So if we go into FM mode, you can set a frequency here, 106.7, which is our local public radio station. So that's my default. Um, but you can change this to whatever you like. I set the TC menu item to max out at 109 megahertz. Um, but go to wherever you want. Hit on set frequency. And same as before, it just types in the frequency. So that's pretty cool. Um, I quite like that. There's a bit of um, work in the code there. So if the frequency starts with a one, then it types, uh, well, sorry, if the frequency doesn't start with a one, it adds an extra zero on the end to make sure it has the right number of digits. And then there's a scan function, which is actually just a copy of the, um, the other scan function. So it just holds the button for the set amount of time until it lands on an FM station. Pretty cool. So we'll hit toggle FM to go back. Um, there's a config option, which the only sub menu I've put in here is a squelch um, app. As you would have seen, you can change the squelch with that menu keypad button, but here you can go in and set squelch, say to four and hit set and it does that. So it uses a, what I call a macro. So it presses exit to make sure it's on the main screen, presses menu, types zero, which makes sure it's on the squelch setting page, hits menu again to change to the bottom row, presses the number key that equates to whatever number you've set here, and then presses exit to exit back out. So that's a pretty cool function if I want squelch six. Boom, done. Uh, and then the last menu here, my last option is check battery. So I didn't really know this until I accidentally did it when I was setting up this code. Uh, but if you hold zero on a Baofeng UV5R, um, it displays the battery voltage. So that just holds zero for two seconds or so, which gives you the battery voltage. Pretty cool. Um, and that's it. That's the whole setup. So things I haven't worked out yet are the push to talk button, um, it is located right here in behind uh, on the on the radio itself, so right in there. So, you know, initially I thought hopefully it would end up over here somewhere and um, I could just drill a little hole, put a little 3D printed button, or just take the rubber pad out of a Baofeng radio and shove it in there. But um, it's ended up behind here, so I'm probably gonna have to just extend those wires and then put a little push button switch, um, just poking through the case here, and then you'll push that button to talk. So that's it. You'll navigate that rotary encoder over here. So the idea is you can hold it in one hand and scroll and click um, with that encoder. And there we have it. So my next steps are uh, more work on the case. I'll probably split it into a bunch of different parts and print them all separately, glue them all together and then finish them. Um, there's some pretty hectic support needed in here to um, to support the top of it because I wanted the cleanest part to be what was exposed. Um, so yeah, to split into more parts makes sense. This is a separate print that at the moment it just fits, but there's some holes there for screws. Um, and I think I might actually make this on my CNC machine and just make it out of aluminium um, because the amount of finishing is intense. And then the the wording here is just going to look crap no matter what I do with the 3D printer. So um, I was going to use the CNC to re-engrave this anyway, but at that stage I may as well just put a piece of aluminium on the CNC and machine this whole part. So I think this will be um, aluminium and 
body will still be 3D printed, I think. I could make it all out of a big piece of billet, but I don't think there's any point to that. Yeah, that's what we're up to. Thanks for watching.